Hello, hello. Welcome back to another BU podcast. I feel like it's been forever, um, longer than I expected, and I apologize for that. But I'm back, and I'm hoping to get back into a rhythm. My mom and I, we moved, so we are officially moved into our new place. Praise God, everything worked out. The place is wonderful. It's not perfect. There were previous people living here before, and so we've had to make some corrections and some improvements. But all in all, we are extremely blessed with the place that we got, and the Lord answered all of our prayers. I am still currently unpacking, not unpacking, like things are unpacked, but like trying to find homes for everything and decorate. Um, (laughs) So that's kind of slowed me down a little bit. Um, And then I've just, you know, been dealing with some stuff emotionally. My trip to Spain got canceled for good reasons, and eventually I will share more about that. But right now I'm just keeping it between Daniel and I and family and all that stuff. But when the time comes, I will, of course, share things. You know, it's it was kind of a um, an emotional change for me. I was, you know, so excited. I was stoked. I had things planned. I had content planned. And then life changed. Um, the Lord intervened with some things. Uh, He answered some prayers, but sometimes when that happens, that also means that other doors get closed. So we are just, you know, back to, um, you know, changing our mindset, changing our perspective and trusting that God is in control and that he knows what we know. I mean, what we don't know (laughs) and what we cannot see. That's kind of a quick little life update. So today's podcast episode is nothing special. Um, For the last few months, I take time to write down things that maybe the Lord has been teaching me or showing me or just things that I wrestle with, and I write those things down. And so I thought it would just be kind of fun to um, share those things. So it's nothing fancy, um, but maybe it's just some things that you guys can resonate with. Yeah, so I'm just kind of sitting down in my room. We're chilling, and I got my cup of coffee. I literally, you guys, I look forward to my cup of coffee every day. I don't know why. And I, and like caffeine doesn't affect me. It really doesn't. I could drink coffee at, at 12 o'clock at night and just knock out in 30 minutes. I just, I like it. I like the warmth of it. I like, I don't know. I like the taste of it, but like it's not straight dark coffee, you know? I don't know. If you relate to that, please let me know because I know a lot of people drink coffee for the caffeine, but it doesn't do that. So, I don't know. Maybe I'm weird. Maybe I'm the only one. (laughs) So anyways, get yourself a cup of coffee, matcha, tea, chai. I don't know. Whatever it is that you drink. I hope that you enjoy this episode and let's just get into it. (laughs) Okay. So the things that I wrote down were for roughly between the months of April and May. And I titled it Things God Has Taught Me Recently. The first thing I have written on here is the ugliest part of our story will be the most beautiful part of our testimony. I think I wrote this because I was thinking about my relationship. And there's probably going to be a lot of things on here that's going to correlate to my relationship. That is my season of life that I'm in. And it will forever be part of the things that I share now because I'm in a relationship I'm with a man that I do intend on marrying at this point set in stone. Um, Obviously, something could happen drastic, but I don't see that happening. Um, Our families don't see that happening. So I say this with full confidence that he is the man that I'm going to marry. And so he is a very big part of my life. Um, And I hope that doesn't annoy you guys that I talk about my relationship so much. I genuinely share it from a place of just excitement and blessing and in awe of God and I want it to truly I don't do it because I'm trying to rub it in your face so I hope that it never comes out that way I do it because I want you young women anybody who's listening even if you're a guy and you're listening to this to know that there is somebody for you and that if you give it to God like he will bless you beyond your like imagination and so it's not to boast it's not to brag it's not to make you feel like, oh, you know, she's trying to make me feel worse that I'm still single. No, because I was there. I know what it's like. 
So I want to relate to you, but I also want to show you that there's more to offer and that God has something waiting for you if you wait on the Lord. So that aside, I wrote this because I was thinking about how difficult it is being in the season of waiting and questioning and just frustration. A lot of time and attention goes into making sure that my relationship is healthy and it stays as connected as it can be. Because when you're long distance, you have to you have to put in a lot to make sure that that person knows that like you're invested, you care. And like we still we know it's unspoken that we are, but like you want to just you want to do your best to make sure that your person that you love feels loved from 4,000 miles away. And you can't do it in common ways, like going on a date or, you know, buying a little surprise gift, you know, so you have to get creative and sending things in the mail is so expensive here. I'm going to send him something for his birthday and I have the smallest box and it's going to cost like starting, starting at $40 and the box is like this. You can't see it if you're listening. I'm sorry. Okay. I digress. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but anyway, so I, I was thinking about this and I was like, you know what though? I need to change my perspective and remember that getting through this long distance, the fact that that Daniel and I have been able to grow so close and create such an intimate relationship and a trust among each other that isn't based on being able to kiss or being able to hold hands or being able to be in each like other's physical presence every day. The fact that we can feel so close is truly such a beautiful thing to have. And we have a trust and a level of communication that I know so many couples don't even have and they live close. So I, I, I said to myself, you know what, this might be hard, but in the end, it's going to be the most beautiful part of our relationship because we're going to look back and we're going to say that despite an ocean in between, despite miles of separation, language barrier and culture on top of all of that, we were able to build a beautiful and strong foundation on God because he's our center. And so that is going to be the most beautiful part of our testimony. It's going to encourage so many. And I hope that it encourages you now. And I'm not saying go out and look for a long distance relationship because it's hard. You have to know. You don't want to play games. <laughs> okay, so number two, um, letting go isn't about giving up. It's about giving in. I wrote this down for myself because I, I'm a perfectionist and I also don't really know how to, sometimes when I pray, I tell God all the time, like, Lord, help me to let go of control and to give you all of that. But that is like a, that's a daily thing that I battle because I'm a perfectionist and I love to know what's going on. I love to know what's happening. I love to be in control and not in a bossy way. It's just, it makes me feel safe. I like knowing what's going to happen next. I, you know, I'm very goal oriented. And I think I wrote this on a day where I was just kind of feeling very out of control and low and defeated because I haven't reached certain goals that I have for myself with, with my social media, with my platform, with my brand that I'm trying to build with my podcast, which I just started not that long ago. So that's what I mean by I'm a perfectionist. Like I set such high standards for myself. And then when I don't meet them, I feel like I'm failing. And and then I'm like, you know, do I give up, like completely let go or do I keep going? And so I felt like God was just kind of reminding me that like letting go, you know, like taking your hands off of it doesn't mean that you're giving up. It doesn't mean that it's not going to be fulfilled, that it's not happening, that it, that you're not gaining momentum. It just, you know, might not be right now, but it just means that you're that you're giving in, actually, that you're giving into my will, to my way, to my plan that I have on your life. And you're giving into the process, the natural process of life, which is things take time. <laughs> so number three, loving and accepting others for where they are. This one is so easy to say, but I feel like it is so hard. Like, it's so difficult for people. People are, are complex. People are layers. Just full of many layers. And 
you can't really get to know somebody from one interaction. You can't even really get to know somebody just by seeing them at church. Even if you see them faithfully at church, you still don't really know them on a deep, intimate level because that takes time. There are layers to people. Sometimes we have this uh, like this natural desire to think that we know somebody based off of one interaction or just seeing them at church because everybody is full of different layers. People are at different levels too. And you can't accept like you can't expect them to be where you're at in life all the time. And so you sometimes And sometimes they never will be. That's the hardest thing is sometimes they're not going to be. Love them for what they bring to the table and stop forcing other things that just maybe aren't meant to be. Like I have a friend. I have a friend that I talk to and she'll come and she'll go and she'll ask me things when it's convenient for her. And then I won't hear from her for a while. And I, I genuinely enjoy talking to her. I genuinely enjoy catching up with her. But I have come to realize that I can't expect her to be that friend that I hoped for. I feel like that actually kind of goes with the other point that I wrote down, which is lowering the expectation, accepting different people give different needs. So that that's very similar. The next thing that I wrote is his strengths and weaknesses are different. Meet him where he is at. So this one I actually wrote something that God taught me regarding my relationship. There are things that God is still teaching me in my relationship. Um, but this was one of them. Your significant other has different is going to have different strengths and weaknesses than you. And if you're single, this is something that you know you need to practice with other people, um, with maybe your mom, your your sibling, your best friend, or anybody close in your life. Just practice that mentality, and then remember when going into a relationship that your significant other is going to be different. And so that means that. Something that is so simple to you may not be simple to them. They're probably never going to be at your level of what comes natural to you, what your strength is. And so your goal is to just encourage them, you know, communicate with them and ask them to improve on that. But like, don't hold your your level of expectation to where you're at on them because it doesn't come natural for them. And me, your significant other, like in the middle. I am a little too heavy on what, you know, I'm really good at. And so I look at Daniel and be like, hey, uh, I need you to do this. And he tries. But sometimes for me, I'm like, that's still like, why is it so difficult? And I have to remember that he took a step. He is doing or did, you know, something that he originally used to not do because it wasn't natural or it just didn't come easy to him. But he's doing it. So I just need to remember that and meet him where he's at. And realize that I'm a perfectionist. I'm a little too goal-oriented. I'm a little too, like, check the list off, you know, for an example. Something about in the beginning of our relationship was I would ask him, when are you going to call me? And he'd be like, oh, sometime tonight. And I'd be like, okay, well, can you give me a time? Because in our culture, in American culture, it's very common to plan and to schedule, you know, calls, meetings, hangout times, all this stuff. And he would say, um, you know, maybe 11-ish p.m. Um, and I was like, okay. And so then when I didn't hear from him at 11 p.m., I would be like, where is he at? Like, what is he doing? I haven't heard anything from him. And then I would start to get frustrated. And, you know, then later I would find out that, you know, something took longer than he expected. And he would call me at 12, 12 o'clock. <laughs> so I'm like, what? Like... That's so rude. You left me an hour waiting and you didn't even communicate to me and tell me that you're going to be late. Like that is a very common thing that we do and that we ask people to communicate about. But it's not in his culture. It isn't. And so I had to learn that about him. And so then I had to communicate to him and explain, you know, why I like to know. Because I don't like to sit around and just be waiting. You know, for me, if I have plans, I don't make other plans. But his culture is very fly of like just one thing after another. And so I explained to him my perspective, my point of view, my concern and what I expected in our relationship. And he explained, you know, that for him, it's culture. And so he has to, it's going to take time and practice for him to remember and to think about that. 
Um, and he has, and he doesn't always get it perfect. Sometimes I still have to be like, where are you at? <laughs> are you going to call tonight? And I'll be like, yes, love, I'm going to call. I'm sorry. Or, you know, sometimes he falls asleep, but the next morning he'll be like, I'm so sorry, honey, that I didn't call you. I fell asleep, you know? And I just remember that to me, I'm like, well, he could just text me before you fall asleep, but <laughs> he works really crazy hours. And so once he hits that bed, he falls asleep. So I recognize that about him and I don't hold that against him. I love him for just knowing that that's his weakness. It's not a make it or break it. And I just, I kind of conform to that. So at night, if I know what we reach a certain time in my time zone, like say seven and he hasn't called, there's a good possibility he's not calling because he usually calls before that. And I don't beat him up about it. I don't get mad at him. I don't go, how dare you not call me? I just, I learned to accept that that is, you know, culture and, and then just time differences. And, you know, he does his best and I do my best. So nothing. The next thing is his perspective is different. Be open. Again, all this stuff you can apply to other people in your life, but I wrote this down because um, sometimes we'll talk about things and I will get so irritated at him because I'm like, how, like, no, how do you not see it the way that I see it right now? That doesn't make sense to me. Like, it's so plain to see I'm right. <laughs> and, you know, have a different perspective on how to handle something too. And I'm like, are you crazy? That's not how we should handle it. But I, I've learned God has taught me to take a step back and to remember that his perspective on situations, encounters, on life, on things that he's been through, like it changes everything. And I have to be open to that. Just because he doesn't see something the way that I see it doesn't mean he's wrong. It doesn't mean I'm wrong. It just means that we both have two different upbringings that have shaped the way that we see people and life and so the best thing that we can do always for each other is to be open-minded and to give each other the opportunity to to share our perspective and to listen and then sometimes we're, we'll come out and be like okay you're actually right on that or we'll come to a place where it's like hey neither one of us is right so or wrong Let's find an in-between and figure out how to move forward. The best thing that I can do for him is to encourage him, listen, suggest, and support him. And then, you know, suggest ideas. Don't make it like, no, do it this way. I promise it's going to work. Just my way is better. Sometimes your significant other might hear your suggestions, but still try an idea of theirs first. Don't take it personally. Just support them. If they fall and fail, be there and then bring up the suggestion again and hope that they take it. Eventually they will take it. And again, I'm not saying this about big stuff. I'm just, you know, this little kind of stuff that maybe you don't see eye to eye on sometimes. Um, next is do not let fear compromise the whole picture. Sometimes I do. I let fear creep in and I start to fear things and wonder things and get worried and concerned. When that happens and I let it take too much of my space in my mind, that battlefield, and I don't combat it properly, I started to let it distort things in my mind and I go, but what if, what if this, what if that? And I have to remember that fear will twist. Fear will take things that are true and distort it. And I have to be careful. I have to rebuke that. And I have to say, no, my God is not the author or illustrator of fear or confusion or doubt. God has given me confirmations. God has done this, this, that, X, Y, and Z. Like, there is a big picture. And although I cannot see it quite yet, the picture that God has shown me is beautiful. And I have to remain confident in that. I cannot let fear come in and try to destroy it. Next is my faith. And preparation now is building a stronger foundation for later. Um, that is true for so many seasons of life, whatever you're facing. But for me personally, for my preparation, I want to take on the characteristics and the mindset and the habits that a wife has for her husband, for her future family, because 
that season is not that far from me anymore. Not as far as it used to be. And I want to practice those qualities even now, even though he's not here, even though we're not married. I want to practice those things because I'm going to be that. And it's not even just, I don't mean just like, oh, cooking and cleaning. Like, no, I'm just talking about, you know, your spirit. And a lot of it too is just a woman of God. You know, Proverbs 31, and I am making a podcast episode for that, or, you know, qualities of a godly woman slash godly wife. So stay tuned for that. So that's kind of just what I mean, and I will go more in depth with that in that episode. But those are just things that I want to, that I'm working on, that I'm praying, God, if there's anything that maybe I'm not very good at, but, you know, I am called to do as a godly wife or a godly woman help me to practice that now so when I am married it doesn't cause strain in our relationship you know or if there's things now that I do that maybe aren't the best for our relationship that cause strife reveal those things to me so I can work on those and so that we can have a better relationship every day like so we can grow closer and closer and be more unified and you know just Because the enemy, the enemy will take any opportunity he can to come and steal, kill, or destroy. And it is your job, you and your significant other, it is your job to protect your relationship and to not give him that ability, to not not even give him an an inch, a, a millimeter of opportunity to come into your relationship. And so you do that with prayer, with reading your word, with communicating, with going to God and asking God, what can I do? Not, not just about God. He's done this. He's done that. Help him to see the errors of his way. No, go to God and say, God, what can I do to better my relationship? What can I do? What can I let go of? What is it that maybe I didn't realize that I have an issue with, but I do, and it's causing conflict, and it's causing maybe my significant other to feel stressed and overwhelmed and confused. I'm like, how do I handle this? Like, reveal that to me. You know, in the end, it it's just going to draw you guys closer together and build and give you a stronger foundation. Um, accept what you can't control. Trust the time will come. That's pretty self-explanatory. We all wrestle with that. Can I get an amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Walk by faith, not by sight. Okay, I'm gonna kind of clump three of them together. I am a strong and wise woman of God. My ministry is now. This is the beginning of my ministry. I wrote this for myself because this may come as a shock to you guys, but I don't have it all together. I am not always confident. I fall into comparison. Sometimes I feel like I'm inadequate, that I'm not good enough, and I I feel like I'm failing. And I have to remind myself, and God often reminds me, that Just because your ministry isn't on a platform or isn't the way that you envisioned it when you were 12 years old, it does not mean that you don't have a ministry. You yourself, you yourself, and I I say this because I relate to it and I know that somebody listening to this deals with it. Because one, us girls, we just deal with comparison. It's, it's a really big problem for us. And I wish it wasn't because I feel like when we focus so much on comparing, we don't spend enough time looking at, at our, our beauty. And then when by the time we realize what we had, we're like old and frail and wrinkly. And then we're, we no longer even have that. We're like, man, I wish I saw how incredible I was. I wish I saw how beautiful and how talented I was. And if I could have that back oh how I would live life differently like don't be that I try so hard to not be that girl because I don't want to be that woman that looks back when I'm 50 years old and is like man I did not realize what I had when I was 20 or 30 like because you you just can't go back we need we need to stop compares comparing ourselves We need to start supporting and we need to start looking in the mirror and seeing what we have, what God has given us and find the beauty in that and strengthen it and and find our weaknesses and then just work on it. But like, it doesn't mean that we're less valuable. We ourselves, 
if you are full, you know, and you're full of God's spirit and you desire to live according to God and to fulfill, we all have a calling already. We're all called to be witnesses and a light. That right there is a ministry. If you are fulfilling that, if you are being different than what this world is, you're fulfilling a ministry right there. Okay, you're fulfilling a calling because it takes, especially in today's world, it takes cold, like coldness. <laughs> I put the word boldness and courage together. Does anybody do that? <laughs> it takes boldness to stand out and to be different. And when you do that and you are praying, God, allow me to be a light and example and then a witness because we're called to be witnesses, that is a ministry, okay? So don't don't confine yourself, your confidence, your value, your self-esteem to a ministry just within four walls of a building. Your ministry is deeper than that. It's it's bigger than that. It's it, your community. It's in your family. Just remember that no matter how small it may seem right now, your ministry is now. And then just continue to pray, continue to ask God, where do you want to lead and guide me and prepare me for that? And when the time is right and you call me to it, help me to be in a position where I am ready to hear it and that I am ready to obey and to move forward in that direction. Not like, okay, God, well, give me like, give me a year to get ready for that ministry. No. When he says, this is what I'm calling you to, you better start praying. Well, then Lord, prepare me to do it. And then when he says, all right, it's time, you better be ready. Even if you don't feel ready, just be like, well, God says I'm ready and God's calling me. That must mean I'm ready and just go. Just trust him. Don't, you know, don't wait because of fear or it will leave and God will find somebody else. Because the thing is, is God is going to do what God wants to do. God is going to move how he wants to move. You just have to determine if you want to be a part of it. So I'm going to move on. <laughs> this is another big one I wrote. God's fulfillment is not based on the amount of things I do right, but my heart. This one, whoo, this one really for me, it goes back to that perfectionism that I have. And sometimes I beat myself up and I think that if I don't do everything right, if I make a mistake, it's going to stop God. It's going to take away the fulfillment that God has on my life. You know what, you know, you know what that does? Like, not only am I putting myself in prison, I am just completely limiting God when I do that. Because I am basically saying that God's will, God's ability is solely based on my actions. And that's not true. Like, it's not, God doesn't look at us and say, the only way that I'm going to fulfill my purpose on your life is if you're perfect. Why do I even think that? Like, I shouldn't, and I don't know why I do. It sounds crazy now that I'm talking about it and saying it out loud because, like, God already knows that I'm imperfect. That's exactly why he came and rode in flesh and died on the cross for me. So why do I put myself on this expectation to be perfect? And if I'm not, God's just done with me, and he's just not going to fulfill what he has. I don't understand it. I don't, I don't know why I do that to myself. And if you do that to yourself, well, you're not alone and we need to stop that together, okay? Because we're limiting ourselves, we're limiting God, not because God is going to stop, but because we're limiting God in our lives. We are the gatekeeper to how much we let God involve himself in our lives. He wants to be in complete control, but when we put doubt and fear and questioning and, well, if I don't do this, if I do that, what should I, like... And we start thinking about what we should do rather than asking God what we should do. We're limiting God. We're limiting what he can do in our life. He looks at our heart. <laughs> Always keep that in mind. It's not about perfection. It's not about what you get right, what you get wrong. He looks at our heart. And people cannot see the content of our heart. Not like how God does. But you need to remember that even if people are against you, God sees your heart and he is for you as long as... You are walking according to him and you are aligning yourself up. If you have confidence in him and you have confidence that he's spoken to you or leading you, people will come against you. You just need to stand firm and, you know, remember that God, God sees, God knows he's there. And even if it's something that you're dealing with and struggling with, 
and it's not perfect, but you know that and you're praying and you're asking God, help me to get to a place where I am better in this. God sees that. That is much better than someone who's just like callous and doesn't think that there's any room for improvement. This was something I learned recently. Rest unto God is also a form of worship, obedience, and trust. That is hard for me because I'm very go, 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 go oriented. And then I learned this and I talked about it in one of my podcast episodes recently, but this was something I learned with my season of waiting with my boyfriend's arrival to America. Just, you know, feeling like I got to give this exuberant worship all the time and have all the answers and be always positive and always like, yes, God's like, I know it's coming. It's happening in Jesus name. All this. God taught me that it's okay. It's okay to sit. It's okay to rest. It's okay to just be tired and to be like, God, I know you're good. I know you're faithful. But right now, I just, I don't feel that oomph. I don't feel that powerful adrenaline of the Holy Spirit (laughs) rushing through my body right now. Like, it's okay. Resting unto God. Resting and sitting in that rest, but knowing that God is good. God's going to take care of me, but I just, I need a moment. That's, That's worship too. Okay, our worship is not always about how flashy it can be. There are different ways to get through seasons. Just because it's different doesn't mean it's wrong. The way that you got through your previous season may look different than how God wants you to get through your current season. Sometimes he does that because he wants to teach us new ways on how to dwell, how to move, how to trust, how to navigate. And then lastly... God will take care of it all in his time. Not everything has to be solved at once. And I feel like a lot of these kind of just go hand in hand, but I wrote them down differently because my mind speaks it differently. I have a tendency to want to find there are things in my relationship that I think, okay, when my boyfriend's here, these are things that we're going to have to figure out and navigate. We're going to have to hire a lawyer. We're going to have to figure out how to do this. How much are the paperwork going to cost? How much is a lawyer going to cost? How much is it going to cost for us to travel back and forth from to Spain? Because until he gets his green card, we're going to have to do that because of his citizenship. Like all of these things I try to figure out and I have to be like, Samantha, stop. Like you're not even there. Stop stressing about it. It's going to be solved. God already has a plan. Stop stop fixating on what you can't even operate in right now like you can't even do anything about that right now just dwell live in where God has you right now and just pray for that time and when it comes that you're ready and that God will lead you and guide you and speak to you but for now like don't stress like stop giving it so much space in your mind because you can't do anything and just trust God like We say that all the time, trust God. And there's moments where it seems easy. And then there's moments where it's like, wow, okay, I'm not as good at this as I thought I was. (laughs) We're in it together. You know, faith is a daily choice. It's a daily battle. It is a daily, you know, experience and growth. So you're not alone. But I hope some of these things that I wrote down resonates with you. And I hope it encourages you. And helps you. And maybe there's something that you didn't know that now you're like, oh, wow, I didn't realize that. But I wrestle with that too. Well, it's okay. We're in it together. (laughs) I hope that all of my content, I hope my videos just help make life feel less alone. And your journey to heaven feel more abundant. And, you know, makes it feel a little bit lighter. Because... I hope to see you in heaven, whoever is listening to my podcast, whether I know you or I don't know you, I hope to see you in heaven. That is the ultimate goal that we should all have. And if you enjoy me making these episodes where I just kind of share what God's been teaching me, let me know in the comments or give this video, this podcast a thumbs up. I don't know. I know you can do it on YouTube. I don't know if you can do that on Spotify. And remember, you can find my podcast on Spotify, on YouTube. You can find it through my bio on Instagram. Don't forget to follow and support. Don't forget to share this podcast. It helps me out. I depend on you guys so much to grow this community. And I want to grow this community with so many young women of God. So many young women who have a desire to live for God. Because I want us to just feel like we're not alone. And lastly, remember to be you because you're beautifully unfinished. God bless. Bye.